This is a florid and luxurious display. Fashion and tradition meet here. The 2003 Chinese Silk Festival has attracted the attention of the whole world. People want to visit Hangzhou not only because of the beautiful West Lake, but also because of the colourful and splendid silk products there. By the 6th century BC, the world-famous Silk Road was built up and passed Chinese silk to Central Asia and Europe. The Silk Road prompted the trade of silk between China and the West and also contributed to the rich cultural and economical exchanges. Chinese silk was then passed to the whole world. By the 10th century, in addition to the Silk Road in the north, another two Silk Roads were built in southwest and on the sea. The roads opened China to the outside world and facilitated the exchange of Chinese and Western civilizations. The Silk Roads have left us with many memories and reflections. The cultivation of silkworm and production of silk in China can be traced back to at least 5,000 years ago. However, at the beginning, silk was not used in ordinary people's daily life because silkworm was regarded as a divine insect. People only used silk to worship the heaven and to wrap the dead. A silkworm spins a cocoon and then becomes a moth and breaks the cocoon to fly away. This was regarded as a perfect and admirable circle of life. People believed it was divine and full of philosophy. People at that time thought that they had to be wrapped in a cocoon after they died so that they could live in heaven after death. Uh 不能穿很高档的丝绸 Silk is soft in quality, bright in colour and rich in patterns. It was a luxury for upper classes during the spring and autumn period and the war state period. The patterns were no longer symbols of totem and wizardry. Vivid pictures of animals and plants prevailed. Different patterns and colours were used at the same time to make it more lively and beautiful.
In the second century, 206 BC, China's Han Dynasty already paid great attention to the silk industry. Some officers were appointed to manage silkworm farms and provided support to them. The officials were given houses by the royal court. Tang Dynasty was the turning point in the history of Chinese silk. The Silk Road prompted the cultural exchanges between China and Central and Western Asia. Chinese craftsmen improved techniques and enriched patterns by learning from the West. Thereby a technical system was established and it didn't change much until the end of the Qing Dynasty. Chatungua 当时的人口很多Silk products in the Tang Dynasty didn't contain any mysterious facts and were no longer simple. The colours were bright and splendid, and the patterns were mainly flowers and birds. The lively patterns portrayed the prosperous and stable Tang society, and its ambition of expanding the territory. It was a golden age for Chinese silk. Chatan 就那些穿着丝绸的衣服的人不是养成人，而真正养成的人，他穿不起丝绸衣服。The styles of silk patterns can mirror the tastes of different times. For example, in the 10th century, the weakened Song dynasty was facing invasions from the northern nomadic tribes. The whole nation was sad and depressed. People wished to escape from the tough reality. As a result, most of the silk patterns were about beautiful natural scenes and life in remote and quiet places. Different from the bright and splendid patterns in Tang Dynasty. Those in Song Dynasty were simple and natural. Bright colors like deep red, blue and orange were out of use, while brown and gray 
were the predominant colours. Natural and lively flowers and even birds were the most frequently used. Hanzo 成为一个丝绸之父 By the 11th century, a new weaving technique appeared. Weavers placed some coloured threads into the silk fabric to make some special patterns. This technique was the most advanced weaving technique in ancient China and was only used to make the most expensive clothes. It was most popular in the 12th century. The technique was used to weave the patterns of red crane on this piece of silk. Produced 500 years ago, the 19 metre long silk fabric was designed to make a gown for the emperor. Such fabrics were called patterned gown material. In the 13th century, the Song dynasty was overthrown by the Mongolians, who were dubbed as a people on horseback. They had special interest in and demand of silk. This greatly boosted silk production. There were also more and more varieties. It was a popular practice to add some gold threads to make the silk more splendid. The Everything seems to be grey. The nomadic people think only the golden colour, like the sunlight, could bring life and brightness to the world. That's why people, particularly the wealthy and noble, would wear golden clothes to show their wealth and dignity. Mungu 
那时候呢，大量的西域的丝绸啊，源源不断的用到了蒙古地区。这样的话，就给蒙古族的那个服饰呢，提供了非常非常那个多的那个原料。Many of the war prisoners from the West were good at weaving golden silk. They worked together and exchanged their techniques. Generally, the silk fabric in that period contained obvious indication of foreign cultures. Dynasties changed, but silk as a symbol of wealth and nobleness remained unchanged. Instead, its position was further strengthened in Ming and Qing dynasties. Rulers of the Ming Dynasty in the 13th century issued a policy on management of weavers. Civil looms were often used to weave silk for the government. People also invented more types of looms. Different looms and weavers enjoyed different social status. The government issued official licenses to government-owned looms. The licenses contained detailed information of the weavers, including their name, age, and birthplace. Licensed weavers could get some grain from the government. By the 16th century, dyeing techniques were abandoned in silk crafts. Embroidery techniques prevailed. People invented the technique in the 16th century BC, and was an important decoration of the royal costume in the Qing dynasty. From the 4th to the 2nd centuries BC, weavers used iron needles to make the embroideries. By the 6th century, a new technique called flat embroidering appeared. The arts of embroidery and calligraphy began to meet each other. By the 16th century, people in local areas had created their own styles of embroideries. The most famous were in Shuzhou, Zhejiang, Hunan, and Sichuan.
对，我们曾经在内蒙古那边发现有一件衣服，一共绣了九十九个图案在一件衣服上面。这个图案里面各种各样的东西都有，比如说是有的人坐着小船在在在钓鱼啊，或者是在山山间骑着毛驴在走啊，或者有的就是牡丹花，有的就是比如说大雁等等，那是各种各样的，非常非常的漂亮。It has been a long tradition to embroider pictures on silk that means good fortune. At the beginning of the 16th century, nearly all the pictures should have the following connotations: wealth, dignity, longevity, and happiness. In the Ming and Qing dynasties, the patterns included virtually everything from nature. In 5,000 years of development, silk weaving and dyeing techniques have made continuing improvement. Wide variety of Chinese silk. This Silk is a kind of animal protein fiber. It is fine, smooth, and soft. So silk garments and bedding materials are not only beautiful, but also good for your health. There are many varieties of silk products. People usually put them in four categories: ling, luo, chao, duan.
Ling features diagonal weaving. It was the most popular in Tang Dynasty over 1,000 years ago. Luo features twisted warp thread. It was also very popular in the Tang Dynasty, particularly in Zhejiang. description of it can be found in some poems at that time. We can view this from silk rags unearthed in the site of Le Feng Tower. Chao refers to tabby silk that is dense and light. It has existed since it first appeared in the Neolithic age. Duan is a kind of bright and smooth silk. It first appeared in Yuan Dynasty 700 years ago and became the mainstream silk product by the 14th century. Because of its bright color, nowadays people often use it to make wedding bed cover. Silk is the pride of Chinese people. It has witnessed China's 5,000-year-old civilization. Silk has escaped the monopoly of the royal court and noble families, and is part of ordinary people's daily life. Silk can bring coolness in the hot summer, thanks to its softness, smoothness, and elegance. Silk was, is, and will always be a fashion.